This episode brought to you by Virtual Shield VPN. With the authoritarian left cracking down on free speech, there's never been a better time to use a VPN. Their suggestions that our credit scores might be based on our internet history in the near future. The same way that banks use data like income to judge credit eligibility now is how websites could use internet search history in the near future. I will not let my internet history be the judge of my credit score. That's why I use Virtual Shield. Just go to the link in the description and pin comment and get Virtual Shield for 50% off today. Hey, welcome back everybody. So today I wanted to talk real quick about what happened over at CNN yesterday with Chris Cuomo and Thomas Friedman. So if you don't know, Thomas Friedman is a columnist over at the New York Times. He's been a long time Democrat Party shill going back to the Bush years at least. And uh, the guy is no friend of Republicans. He's called them in the past un-American whores who are putting a bullet in the country and also the biggest threat to our democracy since the Civil War. I mean, just insane hyperbole, um, the kind of rhetoric that only divides the country, only heats up uh, political divisions while these people from on high you know, act like they're above it all, which is very typical. It's different when they do it. So yesterday on CNN with Chris Cuomo, he actually, and th this is surprising because it's something they've done in the past, but he actually compares Trump supporters and I guess people who watch Fox News to extremists like radical Islamist suicide bombers. Seriously. And I, I mean, this really isn't new. If you go back and you look uh, again, going back to the Bush years, I, I do that a lot because that's really when I started engaging. But if you look, anytime the government shuts down, uh, the media will come out and, and compare Republicans to ta hostage takers or suicide bombers or terrorists. Uh, anytime they're trying to pass something that the Republicans are standing in the way of, the same kind of rhetoric comes out both of the Democrat Party and from their media. So this is nothing new. And it almost seems like it's all been building up to this, right? They just they just keep peppering that into the American mind until they get a moment like, you know, January 6th, and then they can just unleash. I really draw on the experience now these days of of um, the whole war uh, against you know Muslim extremism after 9/11. Okay, real quick before we go any further into this, he wants to compare this to Muslim extremism as uh, the way that we treated Muslim extremism. I want to remind everybody that what people like Friedman and the Democrats and left wing media told us all the time was that we could not blame this small lunatic fringe, the small extremist fringe. Uh, we could not blame that on the larger Muslim pop population or on Islam itself. So just remember that. Keep that in mind. And I'll tell you the biggest thing I learned from that, um, that you need a war of ideas and it's got to come from within. So what do I mean by that? Yeah, what does he mean by that? Because he mentions that a couple other times, this war of ideas. And it leads to the typical lack of self-awareness that has become just emblematic of the left, the modern left. I was actually in Israel on 9-11. Oh. And I sat down with Israeli experts after that. I asked them, what, what have you learned most about suicide bombers? And they said, what we really learned is that, you know, we can catch one, we can catch another, but the third will get through unless the village says no. Okay, real quick, we're talking about people who blow themselves up uh, in crowded markets, kills, killing civilians, military, whoever, they don't care. We're talking about people specifically that flew planes, uh, hijacked airplanes full of people, and then ran them into the Twin Towers, uh, killing everybody uh, uh, in the planes, obviously, and then 3,000 other Americans. He's comparing that to people who disagree with him politically. And ultimately, if you, if you want to give him the benefit of the doubt, he's talking about the hundred, few hundred or so people, maybe a thousand people that stormed into uh, the Capitol, who were actually let into the Capitol by police, who went in, walked around for a little bit, then walked out. There were some incidents, but this was one day, one incident uh, that wasn't, you know, it wasn't the insurrection that they are trying to lead it on at, that it was. But he's comparing that to suicide bombers, Islamist terrorists, ISIS, presumably people who burn and uh, drown people alive in cages. That's what he is comparing his fellow Americans to that he disagrees with politically. That is if the wider community says, no, that's actually not martyrdom, that's murder. That's when it starts to change. And what we need here, what, what Donald Trump brought us, Chris, was- Wait, what? I, I, what is he talking about? What murder? I understand that a, a police officer was killed on January 6th. He was crushed. He was basically stampeded. Um, and then there was an unarmed woman who was killed by police. 
who she was unarmed, had no weapons. That's what happened. What is he talking about? I mean, during the last six months of left wing left wing riots, uh, there's a body count of like 30 people, innocent people, people who were in buildings that were burned, uh, security officers that were shot, um, Trump supporters who were just murdered, like right in the street. So unusual about his presidency is that he gave permission for some of the ugliest voices and ugliest trends and ugliest thoughts in our society to come out. <laughs> Uh, well, that's his uh, subjective determination. I never got any sort of permission from Trump for anything. Uh, I've never hated any group of people or anything like that. All the hate that I witnessed and felt through the last four years came from people like Thomas Friedman. And, uh, you know, just because they repeat over and over again lies, outright lies, like Trump called neo-Nazis verifying people or anything like that, they repeated that lie over and over and over until it just became true in the minds of millions of people. But it's actually not true. He actually never called Mexicans racist. Rapists. He said that some of the people crossing across the border were murderers and rapists and some he assumed were good people. He's not the most eloquent guy. Sure, there are some racists out there who supported Trump, just like there's some racists out there who supported Obama and that support Joe Biden. But you never see any sort of like uh, uh, magnification of that. You never see them focusing on that. It's, it's always their political opposition. They'll find one person or a couple people and then they'll just paint all their entire opposition with that brush. To feel comfortable. And it all came to a climax in the Capitol. We need to take that permission away. Well, just Trump leaving will be the beginning of that. We need to take that permission. First of all, if that was the climax, it was pretty, I mean, it was like a party popper. There wasn't really much there, it's especially compared to the last six months of violence that we've seen from the left. And of course, anytime you'll bring that up, they'll just say, oh, that's absurd that you can't compare the two. And then they, because it's always different when they do it. And then they have all these justifications, or rationalizations for why that was okay. And let's remember that many of these riots and protests that erupted due to police shootings, they were justified, but the media just ignored like inconvenient uh, details until, you know, it was until they couldn't anymore. But by that time, the damage had already been done. Drive-by media, typical drive-by media. They drive by with their misinformation or their uh, withholding of inconvenient information. The damage is done. And then they'll maybe come up with an editor's note, you know, five months later or whatever, after the damage has is, is already been done. But he talks about giving, he, we need to take away permission. Take away permission for what, Thomas Friedman? But the ecosystem, the Fox News permission uh, oh. givers, the whole ecosystem has to say, this is off. This is wrong. You are not proud boys. You're dumb boys. It has to come from within the right, and that's what we all have to be calling for. Uh, okay, so first of all, I'm not, uh, you know, some big Proud Boy expert here. I don't really know much about them, but I know that they're not, they haven't been involved in any rioting, uh, any burning down of businesses, of black businesses, which Antifa and BLM have burned down many. They're not known for stopping uh, the traffic in highways or shooting at people who dare to disobey completely un unlawful orders from BLM and Antifa mobs. And wasn't it CNN that actually incited uh, some uh, several attacks on ICE facilities when uh, they, for one, popularized the idea that the ICE facilities or the detention centers were actually concentration camps. It was Democrats like AOC who popularized it and then networks like CNN that went out and just churned it out there. But we also had uh, uh, CNN, uh, Chris Cuomo and Don Lemon excusing Antifa violence, uh, making excuses for it. Chris Cuomo came out and said that Protests aren't supposed to be peaceful. He actually came out and said that. And then you actually had some uh, rioters in Portland that were attacking residential areas. And when these residential people were begging for them not to attack them uh, and to be peaceful, uh, these mobs were shouting back at them that uh, they were not supposed to be peaceful, that being that having a peaceful protest is actually white supremacy. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
Who incited that? Did that come from CNN? I think maybe. But do you think for a second that they ever plan on holding these standards themselves? Of course not. All that Thomas Friedman and Chris Cuomo are looking for here is getting rid of both political competition and business competition. Thomas Friedman mentioned the arena of ideas earlier, but the fact of the matter is they don't do so well on that. That's why the right, that's why people like me and, and many others have done so well on YouTube and these other social media platforms because we're good at uh, articulating our arguments and convincing people and changing minds. They aren't good at that. All they can do is lob their word bombs at you to shut you up by banning you from their platforms. And if you try to make your own platform, well, they'll go after the companies that host your servers. So one way or the other, Thomas Freeman and Chris Cuomo and others like them simply want their voices to be heard, only their voices to be heard. They are state media propaganda that uh, believe that the only legitimate election is one that they win. The only legitimate scandal is one involving the people that they are in opposition to, the Republicans, conservatives, whoever it may be. The only legitimate election fraud is when they lose an election. And you can see that that has been the pattern since at least George W. Bush. As journalists, as politicians, and Chris, as business leaders, the American business community has got to tell every one of these shows, if you are promoting a big lie, we are taking the money away. CNN, MSNBC, these other networks all promote big lies. When they go out and they just declare systemic racism with no investigation, no analysis of details or data, that's a big lie. When they go out and they claim that Antifa and BLM are mostly peaceful, that's a big lie. When they go out and they claim that 74 million Americans are racist, white supremacists, bigots, uh, uh, extremists, domestic terrorists, it's a big lie. Uh, so who makes this determination? Obviously, these people see themselves as the rulers and that they make the determination. They they make the determination that their political opposition uh, and their business competition need to be silenced. Oh, well, let's just get right on that. That's what a war of ideas is all about. <laughs> He just said it. That's that's the way they see a war of ideas. See, we see a war of ideas as everybody free speech. Everybody uh, on the in the public forum giving their point of view. We believe in going out and having arguments, having debates. It seems like people on the right really enjoy that. We like going out and so, and having discourse, and we like our views being challenged. If, if I'm wrong about something, I want to know it. Uh, Thomas Friedman thinks that. Uh, the arena of ideas, is shutting down speech that he finds inconvenient or he doesn't like. That's the way he sees it. Uh, it these people are just showing who they are. They are authoritarians. They are people who want to lock down the system so that only they have a say and only they are in power.